Political socialization is the process by which we learn uh, how to be involved in politics. And the number one way, this always shows up as a multiple choice question, the number one way for political socialization is the family. If your family is involved in politics, is up on current events, votes, um, performs any sort of political behavior, um, you're more likely to participate as well in the political process. Um, those of you that are in U.S. or AP U.S. government, typically I would say most of your parents are pretty engaged in politics. Either they have an interest, they stay up to date on the current events. I would say most of your parents are probably active voters. So, and that increases the likelihood that you too would be uh, a very active voter, a very active participant in our democracy. There are some other ways as well. I won't necessarily talk about all of them, but political, again, it's just how we learn it. So the educational system obviously uh, is one way because obviously we kind of push that here. We have voter registration drives and things like that. Um, you have different opinion leaders that can do some issue framing. So these are your people like Rachel Maddow and uh, Sean Hannity. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that off the top of my head, I can't, but they are the ones that are kind of taking the issues and framing it in a way in terms of how they are being presented to you. Um, and they're kind of telling you, you know, hinting it or, or leading you to believe in a certain opinion one way or the other. And then um, really the second biggest and equal to the family is the media. And a lot of that has to do with the agenda setting. Um, agenda setting being uh, what information is covered and what is not being covered. Um, you know, negative news sells. 98% uh, of interactions or 99% of interactions between um, suspects and police officers are very, very positive. Um, 95 or 99.9% .9 of airlines, uh, when they are traveling, uh, they land every day. Well, those aren't the things that sell. Those aren't the things that draw people in. Um, and, and a lot of times what the media covers can ultimately um, sway uh, what our opinions are and whether or not we're going to be involved. And I'm not taking anything away in terms of police brutality or anything like that. I'm not saying that that's not a, an important conversation that needs to be had. But the, the media's job of setting the agenda drives the conversation in terms of politics and can increase or decrease the likelihood that we become involved in that process. Political events can also have a long lasting impact on our opinion formation. Um, first, you have what's called the life cycle effect. And the life cycle effect is essentially just that as a young person, you are typically more likely to be liberal uh, than you are as you get older. Um, <clears throat> you know, typically you're 18, 19, 20 year olds uh, into college, you're going to be much more liberal in terms of your stances on certain social issues or economics, but typically as you get older, and I'm not saying that you become a conservative, I just say that you're becoming more conservative in terms of your political beliefs. You also have the generational effect, and that is that there are certain events that have changed the way uh, our population has, has formed their opinion or what their opinions are. For example, the Great Depression, um, I always tell the story of my grandma when we were down in Gatlinburg, uh, we were bringing home, or we were coming home and packing up to leave. And um, I remember we had like a, about two ounces of milk left uh, in the gallon of milk. And she, she always just said, make sure we take that home or we have to drink it here. We can't throw it out. Obviously coming from the Great Depression and the fact that she grew up with uh, some of those negative implications of the Great Depression. But that group of people is going to be much more likely to seek possibly government assistance or they could be less likely to seek government assistance and more kind of working together because of the, the way that the Great Depression was handled. You look at the people that grew up in the time of Watergate in a matter of about 15 years, you had three assassinations, you had Linda, you had President Kennedy assassinated, you had Lyndon Johnson lie about going to the Vietnam War you had Richard Nixon lie about the Vietnam War, and you had Richard Nixon lie about the Watergate scandal. This group of people is going to be more likely to not trust the government. Um, and it's all because of the generation in which they grew up in. And then finally, you have the September 11th terrorist attacks. 
thinking about somebody like a Rand Paul, who's very outspoken against the Patriot Act, um, people that grew up prior to the September 11th attacks and then after are much more skeptical of the government and the collection of data under the Patriot Act than maybe say younger people like yourselves that have only grown up in the era after September 11th. Um, so, you know, the generational effect is also important in terms of developing our public opinion and our opinion of politics, because these events are very defining. And I think COVID-19 so far uh, could be something that defines a lot of your experiences and your events and your opinions as well. Finally, when it comes to socialization, there are two principles uh, that are important. First is the primacy principle, and that is what is first learned is actually learned best. Uh, so typically what it is that your parents have believed or what, what you have been taught originally, whether that's through a faith group or whatever, um, that is typically what you're going to, um, oftentimes it's what you're going to reflect in terms of your own beliefs. Uh, but the second one is the structuring principle, and that is where what is learned first structures later learning. So what it is that you are learning, you're always thinking about that next topic that you're going to learn through the lens of what you previously learned. Uh, and that can oftentimes make it difficult for political opinions to change. Uh, but it can also, you know, kind of make you hold true to what it is that you believe based on what you have learned already. So. Um, political socialization, again, is just the process of learning politics. And a lot of this is showing how the, that, that pub, excuse me, political opinion and belief in the political system can change over time. 